Hi Algebra students, it's Miss Swig and today we are doing 4.3 example 2 and after this lesson you will be able to say that I can change an equation from point slope form to standard form. So the first part of 4.3 we already covered writing our equations in point slope form and now we want to see can I change that point slope form to standard form. Just a little bit of a reminder about point slope form. So that's this equation right here. We take our slope, which is m, and our point that is given, x1 and y1, and we take y minus our y1 value is going to be equal to our m value, or our slope, times, in parentheses, x minus our x1 value. And another little highlighted thing over here that you should probably write down, an equation that we've talked about a little bit, but not too much, is called the standard form of an equation. So standard form is written as ax plus by equals c. And the rest of this box here just t tells us that a should always be greater than zero, and a, b, and c should always be whole numbers. So we should never have fractions in front of our x and y values here. So, for example two, it asked me to take this equation and write it in standard form. So I can see right now that this is written in point slope form, and I could pull out the point if I really wanted to, so it's always y minus y1, so my y value is one, and x minus x1, so my, I know my x value is five. So this was, a, this was the point I was given, and the slope is negative 2 over 3. And I'm just writing that down just for my own sake, but you don't need to do that. I just wanted to pull out what I know my point is and what my slope is. So this is my point slope form. And it wants me to write it in standard form. So on the top of my paper, I'm going to write that standard form again, which was ax plus by equals c. So starting off with this equation, I can see that I have a negative 2 over 3. Well, we already talked about that. We don't want to have any fractions as coefficients when we're using our standard form. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 3. And I can do this because if I do it to one side, I can do it to the other side, and these two equations will, sides of the equation will remain equal. So I'm going to multiply by 3 so I can get rid of this negative 2 thirds. So 3 times negative 2 thirds is going to leave me with just negative 2. And then I now I have 3 on the outside of parenthes my parentheses and y minus 1 on the inside of parentheses on this side. So now we can refer back to one of those properties that we know, and this is called the distributive property. So we know that if we take the parentheses y minus 1 and times it by 3, we need to distribute that 3 to the y and to this 1. And same thing with the negative 2. So we have to times negative 2 times x and negative 2 times 5. So after I use the distributive property, I get 3y minus 3, because 3 times y is 3y, and 3 times 1 is 3. And on the right side of my equation, I get negative 2x, so negative 2 times x is negative 2x, plus 10, because I have minus a negative 2 times 5. So I would have a minus negative 10, which turns into a plus sign there. So now we're getting close. We want to make sure that our ax and our by are on the same side. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And now 13 here is my c, because it doesn't have a variable connected to it. So that's my c. Well, I'm, now I'm really almost there. I have my y by itself on one side, and I have my c on this side. I just need to move this negative 2x. So to move that over to the other side, I just have to add 2x to both sides. So 2x plus 3y equals 13. And I think I am all done. Yes, I am. So we can see here, this is our ax, our by equals c. So we have just taken this original point slope equation and written it into standard form. Let's try another one together. So this one's not as tricky because we have a whole number here. So we're going to start off with our y minus 6 is equal to now we know we need to distribute that negative 3. So if I distribute it, I have negative 3x plus negative 6. Now I want to get that negative 3x over to this side, so I have to add 3x. 
So I have y plus 3x minus 6 is equal to negative 6. Well, I need to make sure that my y and my x are my only two values on this side. So the last thing I need to do, add 6 to both sides, and I will have y plus 3x is equal to 0. Let's take a look at the next, next example here. So I have y minus 10 is equal to 2 times x minus 8 in parentheses. So remember, I have to distribute that 2 first. So I distribute my 2, sorry about that. And so I have y minus 10 is equal to 2x minus 2 times 8, which is 16. Well, I want my 2x to remain positive because that's what one of the things about the standard form is we always want the coefficient in front of x to remain positive. So I'm actually going to leave the 2x where it is and I'm going to add 16 to both sides. So I want to add 16 to both sides. So now I have y, let's see, negative 10 plus 16 is a positive 6 is equal to 2x. And it looks like I'm almost there. So now I just need to get my y over next to my 2x so I can just subtract y from both sides. And I am, will finally get 6 is equal to 2x minus y. Or if you want it to look more like our equation from before, the ax plus by equals c, we can rewrite it as 2x minus y is equal to 6. So now you are able to go from point slope form into standard form.